Welcome to Everyone's Got a Story. I'm your host, Lyndon Griffith Jr. Today I have a special guest, big time director. I'm talking movies, music videos, commercials. Mm -hmm. He's worked with talents such as Fabio Foreign, Little TJ, Talam Remy. The list goes on and on. It's my pleasure to announce Devon Johnson, also known as Jovi, to the show. What's going on, my guy? Thank you for having me, man. Okay, yeah. Happy to be here. Listen, man. Talk to me. We tried to do this a couple of times, and um, everything seemed to work right now. Absolutely. So I got to say, first of all, thank you for taking out the time. Come to my show. I told you I got a good idea, and I wanted to get you on here. And you got so much going on yeah. that it just made even more sense. Absolutely. So listen, let's get right into it. What happened at 625 River Road. Calling for any updates about my mother, Mrs. Johnson? Yes, everything is good. No need to worry. Folks around here are pretty superstitious. It was a story that I created. Uh, I wrote, directed the film, and I want people to watch the film and come up with their own analysis of what happened because there's no real answer to that question. Okay. So, you know, um, for the most part, I just want to take a different approach on filming. So where'd you shoot the movie at? So we shot the movie in Pennsylvania. However, the movie take place in New York. The reason is because the locations in Pennsylvania is beautiful. When you see the house we filmed in, you will understand exactly what I mean. It's a unique architect of a design and it fit the movie perfectly. Does the design or does the design of the, the um, house have any significance to do with the actual story? Or cause it, it, is this based on any true events? So it's not based on true events, it's inspired okay. by true events. Okay. Um, in my personal life. Okay. Yeah, so you know, um, the design, slightly, slightly does. It's a unique design, you will see. So how excited are you to share this film with the world? I mean, you wrote the story, you know, so that shows already how creative you are. So how excited are you to get this? This because um, it's completed now. Yes. Right? Yes. When is it? When is it scheduled to um release? Uh, out to the public from November second. Man, so we we write it we write around that. Yeah, that time, yeah, man. yeah. So and this then is, this is good. It premieres online for streaming January twelfth. So let me. So this would fit under what criteria of a movie? It's a psychological thriller. So I mean, I may have to watch this with. I might have to watch this early in the daytime if I go watch it because, <laughs> you know. Sometimes the movies, man, stay in your head for a few weeks, but it sounds like it's going to be big. It is going to be big. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's, it's one of them films that I think will stick with people for a while. Man, that's awesome, man. We got um, What Happened at 625 River Road. Yes. That's the one of the most recent things you've done, yeah. right? Um, so tell me about film directing. How did you get involved with it? Well, first and foremost, this wasn't recent. I shot this movie, I want to say, two years ago. This was my first wow. feature film. So this is my debut feature film, you know. Um, for it being my first feature film, it took a long time to complete. The whole process of filmmaking to be completely transparent is difficult and hard. Difficult and hard, but it's rewarding once it's finished. What led you to film directing? I always had a passion for cinema since a kid, for the most part. Um... I went to film school for a semester, um, dropped out, realized they were teaching me everything I already knew already, you know, whatever. Maybe I was just young thinking I knew it all. Um, but from there, I went into music. Started okay. doing music. Uh, I became part of a band called New Day, um, who actually scored most of the movie, by the way. Okay. We did our first music video with this director, and I paid a lot of money for this music video. So my expectation was high, I'm excited, you know, like I'm thinking this music video is gonna be everything. When I finally got the music video, it was terrible, bro. It was, it was a disaster. And um, at that time, I argued with the director, he was just not letting me get no revisits at all. He didn't give me no kind of refund. I was really disappointed with the whole experience. And I vowed to myself to never go through that again, ever, ever, ever. So, you know, um, I rekindled my, my, my skills with filmmaking and I did New Day second music video. Knocked it out the park. Okay. Um, to the point where people started asking me, 
the music is good, but who did the video though? Who did the video? And I got a lot of work from that. And that led to me working for companies like Spotify, Tidal, working with the clients like Salam Remy, you know? So from there, I did that for maybe six, seven years. And then I said, okay, I want to take it to the next level. And um, that's when I wrote my first film, What Happened at 625 River Road. Wow. So I know, all right, so let's backtrack. I know you said you were doing music. Well, yeah. Right. So did you go to school for film directing? I did one semester at the Art Institute of New York. Okay. Okay. So I'm, put, I'm, put, I'm putting this together here because yeah, absolutely. I'm a student of, I love successful stories. Yeah. And um, like I said, whether you're an athlete, whether you're a director, actor, uh, a yeah. medical person, the journey that everybody takes, you learn from it. So yeah. not only do I know you personally, but I mean, if I didn't know you, I'd still be locked in. Like, yo, how did this? How did this guy go from? <laughs> nah, listen, this is this is real talk. How'd you go from that to this? So, everybody, every talent has a, a mentor. You know yeah. what I mean? The, you know. So, tell us who was your mentor? You know, in, in in film directing to be where you at today. Well, I would say my partner Tilla was probably my biggest mentor in film directing. Uh, I give you an example of why you know his mentorship played a major role in particular to this film. He also helped me with the music videos and commercials as well, but in particular to this film, after we finished shooting the film and I went through the footage, I thought this was the worst thing I ever did in my life. I spent over 100,000 on this film. My God. I went home, I went through the footage. It was, it was, it was, it was to me, it was the worst thing I've done in my life. I was, I was devastated. But he told me, like, Devon, you have to go through the process. You got to edit it. And it will come out something you probably wouldn't even imagine. And he was right. He kept pushing me, pushing me. So every time I revisit it and edit it again and again, it came out to be better and better. So without him, I wouldn't have had this complete project of a film. And let me tell you, if you guys didn't see the trailer, that trailer had me, like, <laughs> show the whole movie. Show the whole movie. So yeah. So that's a, so what you're saying, I, I could definitely, because that trailer had me, like, yo, I, I, gotta, I haven't seen a movie I haven't gone to the movie theater in years, bro, but mm. I would definitely, whether I stream it or not, I'm going to watch it in there because I know the person that directed the movie. You, you know coming to the premiere. What are you talking oh, about? Okay, man? all right. Coming to the premiere. Listen, bro. y'all heard that, right? Yes. It's all right. documented. It's, it's, it's documented. All right, all right. So listen, so we talk about, um, I, hear, I hear athletes talking about being in the zone, yeah. right? So I was just, you know, thinking of what kind of questions I could talk to you about. I'm like, hold on. Can it, you know, can a director get in the zone? Because you just mentioned, when you shot this, you didn't like how it started out, yeah. and then you stuck with it, then you were blown away with how it did complete, you know? So, have you ever been in the zone as a director? Yeah, I would say I got into the zone, I want to say 50% in to the movie being like done editing and comfortable. I locked in for maybe like three months straight. Okay. Every morning. Okay. For like, for like 8 to like 1 a.m. editing straight. Wow. And you just get a feeling. It, it feels good, you know? And... Let's be clear. I didn't do it all by myself. I have a team as well. So, you know, okay. I, I call my friends. I send them an edit. They'll tell me this is not good. This is good or this is bad. And we just zoned out for like three to four months just editing, editing, editing. So you definitely get into a zone. You have to get into a zone. So um, life-changing experience. Yeah. I think I read somewhere that you um, shot something in Africa. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I just came back from Uganda, Africa. My lord, yo, how do you do you have a twin? How you be well, yeah. yo, you don't stay still, man. I call you, you fly, like yo, it's nonstop, man. So yeah. Uganda, Africa. Uganda, Africa, yeah. All right, all right. So how did this opportunity happen? Um, how did this happen? Uh there's this lady named Fatima. Uh she's a producer. She's familiar with my work. She reached out to me. She said, I love your work, I love what you're doing. Will you will you be interested in filming in Uganda? Okay. I'm like, okay, whatever. Because everybody coming with treatments and concepts and what they want to do. I'm like, Uganda, Africa, okay, we'll, we'll see what's up. You know, if, if you're available, if the budget's right, I do it. I didn't take it serious. Okay. A week later, she sent me the flight, you know? Yeah, so yeah. I'm like, wow, you know? So I'll say, okay, I'm going to clear up my schedule for two weeks. Uh, flew to Africa. And to be honest, the first day was scary as hell. It was, it was, it was terrifying, man. And, um, that's the first time I visited a third world country. You know, um, but as time went on, what I realized is that Africa is beautiful for all the right reasons. And one of the most things that I noticed when I was there, like I saw the brightest smiles in poverty from wow. the kids. Wow. And the kids just gave me like a lot of inspiration and like 
Needless to say, and this is real, I think living in America, we take America for granted. And we need to really step outside of ourselves sometimes to see what everybody else is going through to really appreciate what we have. Do, do you feel that we take America for granted or, or, or do we take life for granted being in America? I think it's both. Both? Okay. I think it's both. You know, yes, I think I had times when I didn't like America, you know, especially when certain people was in office, you think like, it's bad. Nah, mm -hmm. they have it bad, bad. out there, they, There's a bad they thing, have it, bad. They have it bad out there, Got bro. You. Like Got next you. level bad, you okay. know? Got you. And um, that changed my perspective on everything, bro. It got Man. to the point where I came home. I want to say I went to my closet, took out 70% designer clothes, and donated to them, bro. Wow. You know, my wow. Dior, my, 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 my Louis. I put that all in the bag, you know, my, my Jordans, and gave it out, Just bro. to give that experience of- Just, just, just of, to show of, my of, gratitude to, just, just to human, man. I, I, I don't need it. Gotcha. They need it. I really don't need it. Their kids walking to school every barefoot morning probably, for two, right. three hours, barefooted. Yeah. Literally barefoot. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, yo, they need it more than I do. Well, listen, man, that, that shows what kind of character you have, what kind of person yeah, you are. Absolutely. So Thank you. That is a life changing experience for real. Yeah, man. Yeah. So um let let's talk about the um the pressure, man. Ooh. What's what 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 type of pressure do Ooh. you get with being a director? Family, friends, you're a successful guy, or people think people may think you're more successful than what you are, or, oh, by, yeah, or that, you know what I mean? That's so, that's a whole nother level of pressure, right? Because everybody think I got it. Everybody think I got it. But I do have it. Let's be clear. I got it. <laughs> I got it, bro. I promise you I got it. I got oh, it. Man. Yeah, but still, you got it, though. The yeah, I got it. it. That's what I'm saying. But I got it. But what happens is that uh, whatever I make, I put it right back into my craft. Uh, so, like, if I make yeah. if I make 50K on a project, I'm putting, like, 40,000 right back into something else. You're basically funding yourself. There you go. For the I, next project. I buy better equipment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So even though I made 50,000, I don't have 50,000 in my pocket. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why I'm at this point in my life, because I did that for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. You know? Bro, I, I want to say I was barely homeless last year, bro. I faced eviction what? twice. Yeah, I went to court. They tried to evict me, you know, because all my money was into this film. Can I curse on the show? Yeah. Because on the fucking film, you know? So, like, <laughs> I was like, damn, man. I, I was scared. I really was scared. Oh, but um, I have the best supporting cast, you know, and supporting family. And, and, and you know, I... They believed in me, you know? No, no, that's, that's pressure. So, that's pressure. That's real. pressure. So, you know, I had to see this through. A lot of people would have gave up, but I had to see this through. And, and don't, I did. Don't laugh. Can you curse on YouTube? Yes, you could curse on YouTube. Okay, so again, I was going to say, not a step on YouTube. Don't curse. <laughs> yeah, you got to get revenue, yeah, right? I was like, hold on right, a second. Right? Yeah, yeah. Trying to monetize yeah, the yeah, channel. Like, oh, I got to no, monetize, man. bro. Watch yeah, the cursing. Yeah, yeah. Watch the cursing. If you're editing it, just beat that part <laughs> off me, please. Big B. <laughs> Yo, but no, nah, but that's the passion that, cause, no, because that, if your life was on the line, and you know you're being almost evicted, that is the expression that I would expect for you to have. So yeah. rightfully so, rightfully yeah. so. Man, so and that's that was, the test, right? If you believe in yourself, you'll do it. If you doubt in yourself, you listen, say, no, let me pay rent. But I believe in myself so much, I'm willing to do it every time. Now that that's a strength that not everybody has. And that's why not yeah. everybody reaches, you know, certain levels in anything yeah. that they're trying to do. Absolutely. So you gotta pat yourself on the back because um it's the moments where Big time, nah, because <laughs> listen, life is gonna um, you know, it's gonna shape you or break you. Yes. Yes, it and does. And it's easy. You could say all the faithful stuff you wanna say, you know, yeah. and, but when you by yourself, it's tough. You in that room for you lay your head down. It's, it's just you and that, yo, am I really I'm pretty sure you had doubt though. Even though you believe, doubt always Bro, creeps in a I little bit. I told you, I looked at the footage and said, What the <laughs> hell? A hundred thousand down the drain. This is the worst movie I ever done. <laughs> In my life, I, I thought it was over, bro. I thought it was literally over, bro. And 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 just to kind of recap, you, cause that's so crazy to be at that point, yeah. And then go completely to the other side where you're like, yo, I love this project, all, all because those key people you you yeah, are yeah. tapped into gave you the confidence. My and mother, said, uh, my partner Attila, but I have other friends. You know him, Alan. And yeah. He he helped. He he actually wrote the screenplay for the film. Okay, he sort of to you, Alan. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Talented dude, smart as hell. It's, my guy, he saw the first edit. He said, this is terrible, trash it. You know what oh I'm saying? And I said, God damn, but I was so far in and I believed in it so much, I had to keep going. And when your best friend tell you it's not good, you just be like, the average person would have gave up, I promise you. No, but no. I saw it through, man, I saw it through. And I'm so happy I saw it through because the product, people are going to see it real soon, it's awesome. Well, listen, that's my cousin, so I'm going to 
throw, I'm gonna throw a little jab. He got some interesting taste, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I love the guy. But listen, y'all go way back. So yeah, you yeah. Gotta, so you gotta trust him as your friend. Shout Absolutely. out to you, Alan. Absolutely. So listen, so um advice for success. We just talked about these different things that yeah. um happen. What advice are you giving to the director at home watching this? Cause you know, people I think I've watched some of your stuff you posted on Instagram, and I've yeah. seen so many comments. I like to read the comments. Yeah. And I think um, you have a whole tribe of people who really locking into the tips you're giving with the yeah, filming and all that. So, yeah. so what advice for success would you give the up and coming um, I would say cut your there? eyebrows off. It works. <laughs> yo, what? Yo, so what happened? <laughs> talk about. Talk about. Yo, I'm glad cut your I, eyebrows off. It works, man. I'm telling you. That's the camera right here, right? It works. <laughs> Hold on. See, it's growing back. What though. drove him? It's growing back a little to bit. Cut his eyebrows. What drove you to cut the eyebrows? Um, was this a board day? It was so many reasons why, but it, it goes down to the fact that, to be honest with you, I wanted to get people attention. Right, like social media is oversaturated with the same stuff. Right, so I want to do something without jeopardizing my freedom. <laughs> That's number one. Right. Yeah. Stay. Stay. Stay free, man. Stay free and. Integrity, right? I want to keep my integrity as a man, right? My my, my morals, it matters to me. Mm-hmm. So I believe in myself, bro. I could go bald. I could lose a limb. I'm still going to bag the sexiest girl in the club. That's I don't right. care you who got, it is. That's how I am. Yeah, yeah. So eyebrows is nothing to me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Eyebrows, it works. You know what I'm saying? And what I got from that, a lot of people was like, wow, that's a brave move. Mm-hmm. They saw bravery in me cutting my eyebrows. The average person is not cut their eyebrows because they're afraid. That's, you know what I'm saying? That's true. But what happens is that when I want to cut my eyebrows to get your attention, to teach you something, there's value there, right? There's value. Like, is it me because of eyebrows? Let me hear what he got to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he heard what I got to say, and I'm giving valuable tips out, you know? And I'm not, like, charging anybody. I'm just giving out for free because I want to give back mm-hmm. for the most part. So that's one of the reasons why I cut my eyebrows. So I do understand now <laughs> why you cut your eyebrows. <laughs> I don't know if I would have did it, but I understand the meaning behind it, all yeah. right? But... Going back to the advice for the up and coming um, directors out there, yeah, what, filmmakers. Yeah, what would you? What would um, you tell them? I would say, put your career in your own hands. That's number one, right? Uh, I'm not a big believer of managers. I'm not a big believer of agents. I'm not a big okay. believer of that. I'm really not. I believe taking my career in my own hands. That's number one. However, you do need them sometimes. Let's be clear. You okay. need that. That's number one. Number two, you have to believe in yourself, bro. Like, if you make a film or a short film, and they be like, you know what, maybe you should change this, um, add some humor, or do this, and it's not part of your vision, don't do it. Don't do it. Mm-hmm. Do what you truly believe. The last thing you want to do is follow somebody else's vision, right? You put the film out, you don't like it, mm-hmm. you waste time on it, mm-hmm. and it's a disaster. Gotcha. Because who will get blamed? The director. Yeah. Nobody else. Yeah. So believe in yourself and put your career in your own hands. That's a fact, man. That's that's solid advice. Solid advice. Yeah. So um, when we talk about growth, yeah, right. If you look at yourself from when you first started, mm. right, uh, but how, how, you know, however amount of years that was, to where you at now, yeah. What growth do you see? Like, what would you tell the the, the younger you first starting to do this with the experience and knowledge you have now? Lose your ego. Lose your ego. Lose your ego. Learn. Okay. Learn. Uh, I got to a point where I thought I was better than everybody. Oh, I thought I knew everything, but now I know I don't know anything. So I would say lose the ego, mm-hmm. ask questions. Mm-hmm. Um, don't be afraid. Just just don't be afraid to fail, man. But that's how you learn. That's how you learn, right? Don't be afraid to fail. You're going to fail, especially in the film industry. You're going to fail. So embrace those failures. Learn from those failures. Big you know? fact, man. Uh, fact. Take advice from others. But only take what you think that matters best to you. If that makes sense. You gotta customize it. You gotta customize it. Tailor it to what you're doing or to yourself. Got you. Got you. And you, and you always gotta go with your gut. Always gotta go with your gut. And one of the other things I would say, don't ever think you're too big to go back to doing the small jobs. Mm. Cause when I was facing eviction, you know who was hiring me? My workers was hiring me. People that was working for me started hiring me for the most part. Cause I had no money. So they had to hire me. So, you know, I had to put my pride to the size and go back to shooting weddings again and shooting baby showers. You know what I'm saying? So Humbling, right? Humbling. 
Got you. Humbling. Got you. Mm-hmm. Um, who are you most starstruck by, if you can say, you know what I mean, on a respectful level? Yo, I'll be honest with you, man. I want to say I'm most... I think about this the other day. I really was. Somebody asked me the same question. But I, ha- I have to say Beyonce. I would have to say Beyonce. Hold on. Time out. This is the... You saw Beyonce no, in person? I was face to face with Beyonce, bro. My and God. she was stunning. Like, okay. literally stunning, beautiful. And um, it sounds cliche and corny because this happened years ago, too. Mm-hmm. I never thought a human could be that beautiful. I know it sounds wow. corny and lame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's so <laughs> true, bro. This is like, I'm like, yo, she's really stunning. Like, what? This is real? So what you see in the the, the, the TV, it's real. Like, it's like it's real, per- it's, really- it's real life. I'm like she's gorgeous. <laughs> like this is like this is not possible. Is, is this real? <laughs> like a doll, bro. Like this is yo, oh, man, that's this crazy. is crazy. That's so crazy. I was I was that's starstruck. Um, I even asked for a picture. She didn't even respond. She just stood there. She didn't even say nothing to me. You know, so I'm <laughs> yeah, like, okay. it's what it is. Well, it's maybe cool. maybe after seeing this and hearing your story. You know you got the movie, What Happened at 625 in yes, the Road. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe she might go see it. Oh, that would be awesome, You right? know, so you never know, you know. Shout out to Jay, you know. So yeah, listen, yeah. now I'm also hearing that you a good poker player. I mean, Ooh. What, I mean, now what now what level are we talking about? Good. Yo, bro, me and my partner Lloyd, man, my partner. I would say my, 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 my friend because he's not in the film world, but he's like okay. a good friend of mine. Okay. We think about hitting Vegas, bro. You know, go, go, going on that world tour of Vegas thing, man. I'm thinking about really doing that next year. How much you got to pay to get into that? It's different tournaments. Okay. It's different tournaments. Okay. You so know, where I'm, you think you jumping in at with, with your with your skills? Starting with the seven figures, man. We got to go in there, bro. <laughs> Yo, listen. We, we got to go in there. I'm oh going, my, I'm going, I'm going there for God. that, bro. All right, listen. I'm only a phone I'm call I'm telling you I'm going for that, bro. I'm telling you. I'm t- after this movie hits number one in the box office, oh my we God. are out, bro. We are outside. For real. All right, all right. So listen, y'all heard it here. If you see him outside, he's a poker player. Yo, if you see all me right. crying, you know what happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So listen, um, what's the best? Cause you do music videos. I yeah, love music. man. Yeah, what's yeah. What's the best video that you've um, like most fun you had? Um, I would say my best work mm-hmm. was probably um, a song by Bobby Storm. If I can remember the record, I forgot the name of the record. I, I, I'll share it with you. Oh, Hopefully yeah. you can put it in the description. Yeah. But my fun, my most fun I had on set was definitely Zoo York with Fabio and little TJ. Hold on, you shot that? My partner, well at the time, my partner okay. JL, JL shot that was a director of the film. I was helping him direct the film. Okay. But yeah, it definitely was a part of it, 100%. I only said that because it was fire. Yeah, yeah, we did you it together, I mean? man. Like, we, we did it, it was me, him, my guy Attila, we were together and I don't think it was a treatment. I really don't think it was a treatment, man. It was just, just like winged it? Went out and just went crazy. And the artists on that, to be clear, was uh, Fabio, Fabio and, and Little TJ. TJ. Yeah, All that right. was like the most fun. We had cops chasing us in every borough. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, we, All your Brooklyn stuff. Yeah, man. yeah. yeah it, was, it was wild, bro. It was literally wild. And then the crazy part, we had to edit it in like 12 hours to put out the next day. Talk about turnover, man. Th- that, the turnaround was crazy because everybody was seeing everybody's stories from us going from borough to borough, and they were like, what's going on, what's going on? The hype was already there, right? So yeah. we didn't want to lose the hype. So right after we finished shooting, I went to jail, shot that house, and we edited it there. Wow, listen, I noticed you shot a lot of videos with with, uh, with uh, Fabio, man. So yeah. how was it working with him? Because you guys seem to have like some chemistry, man. Cause you got He's from Brooklyn, bro. We got a few He's from videos Brooklyn. with him, We just paid from Brooklyn, man. Nah, cool dude, bro. Cool dude. Right. Um, shout out to Fabio. Yeah, shout out to Fabio, yeah. but that would have never happened if it wasn't for jail shot that. Okay. And that's another tip I would love to give to up and coming directors, videographers is that collaborating is very important. Collaboration. Okay. Collaboration is very important, man. Mm-hmm. So JL definitely uh, allowed me to be a part of that. Got gotcha. you. And I appreciate him for that. All right. Well, listen, I got I got names. I want you to tell me whatever comes to your mind when you hear these names. All Oof. right. Playing the game. <clears throat> That's right. We're going to end it with a little game, man. We're, right. we're gonna, we're gonna, so I got names for you here. Yeah. Salam Remy, Drew Bernard, Joel Ortiz, three names. What right. comes to mind when you think about them people? Salam Remy. That's that's like, that's like my mentor for for like producing and just being an artist and just seeing things in a different way. Okay. So I would say Salam Remy, super creative. Okay. Like creativity, right? Joel Ortiz is big bro. Big bro. All that, right. That's big bro all the way, man. Hundred percent big bro. And what about Drew? Jude is is is, is, is like my real life mentor. Real life, real so like life. When you have them real life, real life fixing evictions, I call Jude. Ask him, yo, what should I do? 
you know. Wow, okay. And he don't sugarcoat it, bro. He keep it straightforward with me. You need them people in you your life. You need that, you know. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't not be in the seat right now getting ready to release my film. Oh, man, that's, 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 that's a blessing, bro. It's a, that's blessing. a blessing. And you know what the crazy part? <clears throat> this, this is going to blow your mind even more. I met Jude right here on this floor. First wow. time ever. So listen, for you guys at yeah. home, real quick, yeah. it's funny that where we're shooting, right, it's mm-hmm. a full circle thing going on here. This yep. is where, before he was big time, this is where he was paving the way. Yes. And the owner you know, and... Yes, so Jude Bernard owned a room in the corner down the hall. And it was like just an empty room where you could like have dinners there, have little events. And this is when I was early, early being a videographer, a small camera. I came in there and he just, he, he embraced me, man. He embraced me, bro. Wow. And listen. ever since then, that had to be, I want to say at least 18 years ago, bro. At least. I'm seeing oh, this. Oh, on this floor right here. That's crazy. I'm seeing this in real time. And I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you. He tells me he knows the owner. I'm like, all right. He meets the owner, him and him start. Him and the owner start talking and, and, and reminiscing, <laughs> and then the, like, yo, listen. This is why, like you said, when you have a gut feeling to do something, yeah, you gotta do it because gotta do it. I told you from the beginning, yeah, you know, I want the show to pop off, and you was like, you know, I was like, damn, how your story is not out. So I was already like, I'm a fan, period. Yeah. But the confirmation for me is seeing how I didn't know you knew this building and yeah, the man. people that you uh, meeting here, and so that's full circle for you. Kind of, you. See, I kind of like started here, bro, in a yo, way, you know. So listen, to be back here is like wow, right? Yo, I couldn't. I couldn't plan this. I couldn't script this. Yeah, bro. I swear to God. This so is, this is the truth. This is, this is the truth, man. Y'all gotta believe it. Yeah. All right. So listen, man. We're gonna um. Let me see. So, as a director and you yeah. having good taste, I want you to tell me some of your favorite. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna give you a category. Tell me yeah. what's your favorite. Yeah. Go ahead. Don't just, just keep it real with us. I will. What's your favorite music video? Since you was a director and all, I have to say your... "Super Duper Fly" by Missy Elliott, man. Are oh, you taking I, this back? Okay. Yeah, I, it just it does it works. Push out that hype. Wait, Probably. hold on. Is it "I Can't Stand the Rain"? I can't stand the rain. That video Pop, does something for it, me. It was hype, hundred percent. Hundred percent hype. Hype was killing Come me on, at that man. time. Hundred percent right. hype. Who's your favorite film director? Christopher Nolan. What what has he shot? I mean, no disrespect. No, no. I, I mean, <laughs> no. I'm not good with no names. I ain't good with no names. But you might yeah. help me if you tell me what, uh, what he Christopher shot. Christopher Nolan did the whole Dark Knight trilogy. He oh, did Chris, yeah, yeah. Chris, what's up, Chris? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. He, he did Inception, you know. He, oh, he did man, I still, I'll be honest, I don't know what he's doing. I've yeah, seen all this stuff, Yeah, man. yeah, he's a phenomenal film director. Okay. And, you know, Shout out to you, Chris. I study his work from bottom to top. Okay. Completely. Who's your favorite actor? My favorite actor, it, it, it varies, but right now it's Denzel Washington. Um, Who's your favorite music artist? My favorite music artist, how about I do it like this? My favorite music artist is Drake. Okay. My Big favorite Drake, rapper man. is Hove. Okay. Now, I, I think that's against the Constitution to have Drake and Jay-Z as your... <laughs> Jay-Z don't sing. Drake <laughs> sings. You know what I'm saying? I would I would, I would, I would, I would, I would yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Um, yeah, definitely. What's your favorite album? Brother B. Dark yeah, Knight right. Twisted Fantasy? Kanye, right? Yes, absolutely. That, 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 that was He's my favorite album. creative of all time. My favorite creative. I, no, no, no. I, I don't put him in an artist no more. Creative because his Fashion clothes. Fashion and all that there too. There you go. Big you know time. I don't think nobody's done it. On Kanye's level. And he's so fashion. influential, you know what I'm saying? And even though he says some wild things, I know he has the right intention sometimes. All right, all right. And I think lastly, man, what's your favorite movie? My favorite movie of all time probably have to be The Matrix. Okay. That that changed my life. Did you did you work with um Keanu Reeves and something? Or 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 no. Have you ever have you ever worked with Keanu so Reeves? So Keanu Reeves, it was it was a film that I, my band did a soundtrack to oh, the film. Okay. okay. So yeah, I worked on that with him for sure. All right. Um, well listen, man. Yeah. We covered a lot. Yes. I mean, we might have to do a part two. Absolutely. I'd be loving it. So, once to. again, I want to cut, you know, listen, what happened at six? Yes. What happened at 625 River Road, be in theaters November 2nd. November It'll be 2nd. streaming January, January 12th. Um, independent. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Independent film distributed through Byron Allen. And, you know, just say one more thing, if you don't mind, okay. is that this film, I decided to do this with brand new actors brand new actresses, you know, I want to start fresh and do something unique, you know, and like I said, it's all independent. So when you guys see it, you will see that I'm competing with the top studios by myself, you know, so. Well, listen, if that, that trailer, clear. if that trailer is something you guys need for appetizer, check that trailer out because I'm telling you, it's fire. And brother, I know you, listen, just promise to come back on the show. Well, first of all, I want to say congratulations on the show, number one. Thank you, man. You know, and I, I know it takes a lot of courage to do something like this, and you did a great job. You're doing a great job. 
Thank you, man. You know, I'm just trying to hopefully have a trajectory just like you have in directing with the Hopefully with it's going to get done, man. bro. I already know it's going to get done. Yo, so I'm honored to be on your show, man. My man. All right. Thank All you. Right. See you again. So listen guys, I have the leading star to what happened at 625 River Road. All right, Francesca, how you doing? I'm doing great. All how right, so how does it feel getting this film done? And tell us about the film and your role in it and um, some of the challenges, all the good stuff that happened with this film. Sounds great. Well, first of all, I feel great. I look feel great. excited, thank you. <laughs> because um, we've been looking forward to this moment and it's finally coming up. And um, yeah, we were working quite hard, okay. me with, you know, my director and, and, and my fellow partners, actors too. And so I am the main character. Um, I'm Laura in the film. Okay. And it's about two, two young girls that go to go on vacation, go on vacation, and they're just, you know, having a great time, and then certain things start happening. You don't give too much, don't give too much I'm to the people. To don't give too much to the people. <laughs> no um, spoilers. All right, all right. So what initially drew you to the project? What initially, well, I love thriller movies. Since I was a kid, I, I was always intrigued by it. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as I saw that it was a suspenseful movie, I got an interest in it, and I submitted myself to it. How did yeah. you prepare for the role? How did I prepare? First off, I memorized my lines. Then once I get familiar with them, I start pretty much imagining myself in that position and, and just being present in that moment. That, that'll help me connect with the role, knowing where is, who is she, where is she going, what, what does she want. Purpose okay. and other things. I, I told you, I'm a fan of music and film. So I always hear actors talk about sometimes after they play a role, they might have to, um, they get so into the role that when they finish, they have to make adjustments to kind of get back to their normal self. Did, did you have to go through anything like that? Depending on um, like what, you know, did you have to make any changes after the film to kind of get back to your normal, you know, your normal vibe? Or was it just, you could just turn it off and on, you know, once the movie's on, you know? I think I kind of did. I, I think I talked to my director about it. Okay. Because you get used to it. Like, our body get used to things. Mm -hmm. And we were working on that for like a few weeks. Okay. And then that entire month, at the end of the month, we were still working on it. So, yes, I had to like, you know, reset my mind, just go back to normal. Because <laughs> listen, being, being an actor, actress is not... It's not an easy thing. People see it and we take it yes. for granted how how hard you guys work and what you guys have to do to, to to make us, you know, fans of this and really get into the movie. So um how was it collaborating with the cast, you know, to, to do the film? It was really great. Everybody was doing their job, doing their part, you know, we were feeling great with each other. At the beginning we were kind of familiarizing ourselves together. Like for example, me and Kelly, we went out to you know, to do certain activities like going on a dinner, to like get familiar with each other. Who, who's Kelly? Um, just don't give too much, but who, who is she with you in the movie? Is she like a friend in the movie? Kelly is my best friend. Okay, so movie. so to get that chemistry, you guys did stuff, yes. you know, to, to make it look real on, on film, right? Correct. That's awesome. Yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, um, some scenes, what scene? Well, no, you can't. No, I, the director's <laughs> here. We didn't want to get into trouble, right? Um, how was your experience? On this film, um, you know, the perspective as an actress, uh, as an actress, you know, what's your perspective from, um, you know, just doing the film? My perspective, I would say that it was a positive perspective because I did what I had to do, and I was following my directors. You know, I was, I was being, I was getting guided, or he was always guiding me to mm -hmm. do, you know. To follow his vision. So I feel great about it that I was 
um, always doing whatever he wanted me to do. Has the film, right? I didn't, I didn't clarify what I was saying, but has the film, based on what the movie has had to change your perspective on anything like on a life basis? Like, you know, you shoot a movie like this, does it change your perspective about life in any kind of way? That's an interesting question. Thank you, I try. <laughs> I would say that, no, I mean, I would say it actually confirmed that you know, how much we value friendships. Okay. And so, yeah, it was mostly about friendships in the movie and and, and how some people are just, you know, love their friends and, and in, a, in a good way, I would say. Were you scared to be alone after you shot this movie? Because it's a little, it's a little <laughs> more on the, on, the, on the horror side. So were you were you like, I got to make sure I have company a little more until I get back, you know, from, from shooting the film? Or no, were you okay? No, right, right. Because right. I love thriller movies. <laughs> I've always watched them, yeah. Is, is there a message or a theme in the film that um, you connect with? A message? There are a lot of good things in it, you know. Um, I would say that the part where I talk about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am, so I would say that that was a positive thing, that I'm from Dominican Republic and I mentioned that. Republic, but I'm, not, I'm not saying more, so I'm not going to give more spoilers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. How do you hope this film would uh, resonate with the audience? How do you, you know, what do you want the audience to take away when they watch this film? I would say they, they, you, they you feel more familiar with the friendship, like I mentioned before, how, how much we value friendships and the value of it, you know. So friendship is a big theme with this. Definitely. And um, like you said, I mentioned Kelly, you guys. Um, who did you bond with the most while you were shooting this movie? Because it took, uh, I think we were talking to um, Devon earlier, and he was saying it was a little, little time in between or whatever. So um, who did you bond with the most? Was, was it Kelly? Did you bond with her the most um, during the film? Yeah, because we were spending the most time together. Okay. Kelly and then Miss Jones. I mean, I think all of them because... Wow. Because a lot of times as a fan, some people really, that's how relationships are formed yes. and last for the next 20, 30 years or a lifetime. It'll be a that's lifetime right. of friendship. So, well, listen, um, anything else you want to tell the people that you, um, I think I, I think I, I checked the Instagram and knew you model, right? I do model, yes. All right, you want to give the people some, info, you know, some back, some back history to uh, your modeling career as well? Definitely. Well, I, I actually have been modeling since like four years, five years ago since I came to New York. Okay. I'm originally from the Dominican Republic and came to New York to follow my dreams as, an, as a model and actress, which is my passion. That's awesome. And um, I'm in Instagram as Miss Francesca and Facebook Francesca Pujols. Okay, you want to spell it for the people? Cause I'm pretty sure the fellas are gonna to want to check it out as soon <laughs> as soon as you give the Instagram. They're gonna to want to check it out. So, so, so spell it for the people. Right. So Miss French. So F R A N C H E S K I Francesca. All right. P S Peter U J O L S Pujols. Francesca Pujols. Well, listen. I wish you the best in your career, acting, and modeling, and um, I. I know you're going to have a lot more stuff going on, so I'll definitely be reaching out to you to tell us some the next big script you get or the next big whatever you got going on. We want to hear it on the show, all right? Great. So it's a pleasure meeting you. I wish you the best of luck with the film, too, as well, and for whatever else you got going on, because I know you got big things ahead of you, so I wish you the Thank best in all you. that you do. Thank you. I appreciate it. You, right. too.